Well, John, look, uh, welcome to uh, Roselle TV, and thanks so much for coming in. I know you're uh, pretty busy at the moment, uh, packing for the World Masters. Now, we'll get on to the World Masters in a minute, but I did want to, before we go there, I did want to ask you how long you've been involved with the Balmain District Football Club. I know in 2009 um, you were made um, a life member and that doesn't actually come to everybody so maybe just give us a bit of background and then we'll get to the big trip. Okay, um, geez, it's going back a long time now. I'm, I think it was probably 1998 that I first started right. with the, um, the Balmain Soccer Club right, okay. when my daughter Maeve joined the junior training squad. Right. Um, and then in 1999, she started playing under sevens. So I was okay. coach of her under sevens team. Right, okay, very good. Um, then the following year, my son started playing under sixes. Bryce started playing under sixes, so I switched to coaching him. Okay. Coached him till about uh, under 11s. Right. Um, and uh, then switched back to coaching Maeve. Right. In the under 14s in 2000, and that might have been 2000. Actually, I can tell you when that was because we won a premiership. Right. So that was in 2006. Very good. Very so good. That was in 2006. Uh, I started playing over 35s in 2003. Okay. We won a premiership our first year. I thought, how good is this? <laughs> haven't, year. haven't played football for about 30 years. Never won a premiership in anything in my life. Right. Back to football at 43 and. And a premiership. Premiership first Fan off. Fantastic. I'm still waiting for the second though. Right. Some 11 years later. Um, yeah, so I was, I was president for a number of years in the, oh, I don't know exactly when that was, but maybe 2005 to 2000, no, I think I finished in about 2008, so it was five years from, say, 2003 okay. to 2004 to 2009, something like that, I was president of the club. So that, that's, that's a pretty big commitment. Yeah, it was at the time, yes. 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 And yes. you survived it? I survived it indeed. And maybe just, what were maybe a couple of the big things that you saw happen in that length of time? Um, well, the, the club has grown enormously um, in that time. Uh, things like registration used to be, you know, Alan Kennedy sitting down at a desk down at Eastern Park and people wandering in to, to register. Yes. Um, it's now all electronically done. Uh, now much easier. And, and how many members would have been approximately? Well, I, th I think there was about a thousand members when I was the president, from okay, memory. Okay, so a sizable. It was, it was still a sizable club. It was still the biggest club in, in the district yes, yes. at that time. Yes. Um, it's grown, I believe there's over 2,000 members now. So That's it's right. It's about yes. doubled in size. Right. Um, you know, it's, I was the first president to um, engage an em employee to run the club. When it became obvious that there was just too much work and it was too hard getting volunteers to do it, yes. yes. So um, and we had, you know, we had a, a fairly uh, strong financial base at the time. Okay. So that's why we, we decided that we would employ employ someone. Right. Um, I also reconfigured uh, with Chris Dunkley. We reconfigured Callan Park, where there was only one field down there, to get two full size fields because of the shortage of grounds that we had at the time. Yes, I know you're a big advocate for. Uh is it harassing the council or negotiating uh, with council to get more yeah. more grounds for the yeah. juniors? So yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Well, certainly over the years, um, I, I, I've been involved in the Callan Park uh, debates. Yes. Attended many, many meetings over that of the various master plans and advocated through council. Um, but I think the, the current um, people on the committee are clearly much better advocates than I was. Um, <laughs> And they finally got some action. I was up at Callan Park uh, yesterday walking the dog and yes. noticed that uh, the Balmain field is, is now fenced off. Right, And yes. there's actually quite a bit of earthworks going on on the Glover Road field as we speak. So hopefully next year there'll be a few more football fields for us at Callan Park. Very good, very good. Tell me, um, and you're still coaching. You know, you've been coaching up to quite recently, haven't I you? I coached uh, the last three years. I coached um, my daughter's all-age women's team. Yes. They've been taken over by um, some much better coaches this year <laughs> in yourself and Robbie Gallick. <laughs> no, yeah, that's... <laughs> All right. I Look, handed that on, be, well, partly because I'm going on this trip and, uh, you know, wouldn't have been there for the, for the year. 
and partly because I think the, the girls needed another voice to listen to, another tell, accent. Tell me, tell me about this trip. This is the, the World Masters, is that right? The, and, yeah, the World Masters Games in Turin. Yes. Uh, in 2009, we had two teams in the World Masters Games in Sydney when they were in Sydney. Right. And a bunch of us thought, gee, this would be a lot of fun in another town. Yes. So we started thinking about Turin, and then about, I guess, about 18 months ago, we started gathering some names. Yes, yeah. Um, and we've had a few in and a few out and uh, yes. a few yeses and a few noes. And so how many are going now? How, how many? We've got a squad of 17. You've got a squad of 17, fantastic. Yeah. And tell me with the, with the World Masters, is it all different age groups or is there just a particular age group? All, all different age groups uh, right. in football. There's um, over 30s, 35s, 40s, 45s, and 55s. Right. Um, and it's a multidiscipline sport event. It's like it's like Olympics for old farts. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. And so, how do you fancy your chances? Now, this is in Turin, isn't it? This is, is in Turin, in yes. Italy. Yes. How do we fancy our chances? Um, we're setting the bar quite low. <laughs> <laughs> because that that way we can we, we can only be um, be uh, pleased with the outcome. Um, we don't know really. We we're playing in the over forty fives. Yes. Even though most of us are over fifty. Right. But yeah. we've got a couple of guys who are um, under fifty, so we we play in their age group. Um, we've no idea what the opposition will be like. Um, it might be lots of um, European teams. Uh, we are playing in the competitive division. There's two divisions in each age group. Okay. So there's a premier division, which is for those that have three or more ex-international players. Right. We're not in that category. Right. Uh, we're in the, the competitive division, they call it. Yes. So we have no idea what, um, what the standard of the opposition will be like. Right. Um, right. Hopefully we're competitive. But the main idea is to go out and enjoy it and be part of the event. In, indeed. But I, I do know you've been having some secret coaching sessions <laughs> or training sessions, so I, I think you're going to be competitive. Well, we thought we should t try to gel as a team at least. Very good. Now, um, look, we, Roselle TV, we'd like to wish yourself and the boys um, every success. Mm. And we'd love to hear about your shenanigans uh, when you get back and hopefully even uh, bring uh, some silverware with you. Well, I'd hope to bring some silverware. I'm happy to talk about the football when we get back. But as you know, Gerard, what happens on tour stays on tour. <laughs> Very good. Thanks so much, John, for coming on Roselle TV. Pleasure. Thanks for having me, Gerard. Very good.